Hi, this is Chris and welcome to Winemaker TV. If you like wine, if you like cider, if you like mead and you want to learn how to make it for yourself, this is the place for you. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you'll know every time that I come out with a new wine and a new video. Like I said, if you ever wanted to make wine, cider, and mead, but you just didn't have the money to get the equipment, well, I'm going to show you how to get some key equipment for cheap or free. So stay tuned. The major barrier uh, to get started making your own wide wine, cider, and meat, and even beer is the equipment. Now, some of that equipment can be a little expensive, a lot of expense, especially when you start getting into brewing beer and burners and, um, you know, three tiered systems and all that. Um, but I like to stick with wine, cider, and mead. Um, and I will, I've got some, accumulated a few items that I have gotten for free or really cheap. And I will go over these real quick. So you'll need um, some fur. Uh, some carboys, uh, some bottling buckets, some fermenting buckets, uh, some bottles, and like I said, I'll show you each of those that I've done and that I've gotten either for free or I've repurposed or they very low cost. And you know, when some of you are more advanced people, there's people out there, I call them, they like to brew with their little pinky out, you know like sipping tea, oh, it's got to be done my way, or it's all wrong. Shove that to the side, forget about those people. This is the beginner. We're going to uh, get started making mead and cider and wine. Worry about the pinky out later. Let's just get started making the stuff first. So let's go over what, you, what we're gonna show you today. Okay, let's start with your fermenters. I like to make one gallon, three gallon, and five gallon batches. So my one gallon, my one gallon fermenter, I don't have a bucket. I just use these uh, one gallon glass carboys and they're jug wine. That's right. Buy you a couple of these for about $15. Enjoy the wine, save uh, the bottle you can use it as your one gallon fermenter. I have several of these lying around. Then you have your three gallon fermenter. Now, like I said, some people who are more advanced will go, oh, you use plastic? This is a three gallon, three gallon uh, water jug you get from Walmart for about six bucks. Um, I just washed it so it's still got some water in the bottom. So. I rinsed it out where I bottled some stuff the other day. But these are good, sturdy plastic that don't break. And as long as you're not bulk aging for, you know, years, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You're going to get flack for it, but forget about it. I've been to plenty, plenty of wineries and backstage tours. You know what I've never seen? Humongous glass fermenter vessels. They always uh, high density polyethylene. Uh, that's what you, um, when you see any of these, make sure they have the little two on it. I'll show, see if we get an emblem here to show you the symbol that make sure your bucket has on the bottom. And I have a three gallon bucket. I have two of these. This is my bottling bucket. I got this bucket for free. This comes from the Publix uh, bakery that had um, that get uh, the buttercream icing from and all I did was buy at a brew shop see if I can take it off yeah here it comes all I did was buy from my local brew shop it's coming this uh, bo bottling spigot comes with O-rings on each side. Take them off and clean them every so often. All you gotta do is drill a one inch hole and there's your there's your spigot for your bottling bucket. I made it myself. The The little spigot was a dollar. So I got my th three gallon fermenter for a bottling bucket and fermenter for one dollar. 
They came with tops. They even cleaned them for me. But make sure I got four of them, and I only kept two because the other ones had little micro, you know, little scratches. So inspect them. Get more than you need. Then discard the ones that aren't up to par. Then I have a the tops for them. This one don't have one. But you can get also from a brew shop a little grommet. It's about 50 cents. That's where you uh, drill a, uh, I think it's a quarter inch hole, and install the grommet. And that's where you have your airlock. And you have your five gallon batches. I have a five gallon carboy, plastic carboy. This high density polyethylene. And this is a five-gallon brew bucket from Walmart, two dollars and seventy-nine sixty-nine cents to two dollars and seventy cents, a dollar fifty for the top. Again, this is a food grade, high-density polyethylene. So you make sure you have that on there. So that is your brewing vessels. Now we're going to go through what you'll need for bottling. Um, I like to save my Grosch flip style uh, bottles. Also from Aldi, I've collected several of these now. These uh, sparkling lemonade. These are able to have uh, like your sparkling ciders, your uh, sparkling wines or sparkling meads or steel, but these uh, have a sparkling lemonade in them so they can handle the carbonation. So I always try to get stuff that's like dual purpose. It'll, I can have a steel cider bead wine. Also, I can have a sparkling carbonated steel uh, or wine. <clears throat> now, I'm just trying to figure, uh, try these out. So these also are can handle carbonation. This is a 1.25 liter soda bottle. I just tried these with some sparkling cider. I've had some, tastes great. It holds the cider really well. You can tell it's starting to carbonate because it's, uh, it's got some pressure on it. But these are also designed to hold carbonated drinks. So just keep them out of the sun. That's all, you just gotta keep them in a dark place. So that's your bottling, and all that was free. I, um, I actually got most of my bottles from friends who went to kegs. So when they went to the kegs, they don't need the bottles anymore, so they just gave them to me. Also, what you can use are re repurpose Corona bottles. I have probably three cases of Corona bottles, three cases of the Grosch Flip Style, and probably a case of the all these lemonade bottles and they all work great and like i said i just tried the uh soda bottles and they're working pretty good so far so I, i'll give it a thumbs up if you're really starting out but i, I like the grosch style the best you can just replace the o-ring you don't need a bottle cap in it you don't need a bottle cap you don't need caps you don't need corks you don't need a corker all you need is the maybe replace the little o-rings every now and then you can get them on amazon so that's the bottles hi now we're going to go over uh, a few pieces of equipment that you must be buy online or a brew shop um, first off you're going to need a racking cane you need to have this to transfer your uh, wines and meads and ciders from a primary to a secondary from secondary to a bottling bucket and that kind of thing. This is designed for a one gallon uh, bottling, I mean a, a brew bucket, but uh, it will work on three gallon buckets, five gallon buckets, and a three gallon carboy. I don't, I'm not sure if it'll work for a five gallon carboy, so I'm gonna get a one designed for a five gallon one soon. You're gonna need some bungs, this one, the larger one goes into the carboy. I believe it's a six. One's a six and one's a three. Uh, so I use both. So I need you need the bigger one for your carboy. 
and you need the smaller one if you want to make one gallon ones, batches. And then you'll need airlocks. This airlock was damaged in shipping, so I keep it just to show for show. So it's got a hole right there, so uh, can't use it, but it's good to, to show people. And you need a hydrometer. I have a hydrometer ordered, and you use a hydrometer to test how much alcohol you have in your um, in your brews or in your wines. Or um, you get your starting gravity, and you get your finished gravity, and you do the math, and it'll tell you how much ABV alcohol by volume that you have. That's I say it's optional, but once you get on into it more, you kind of know want to know how much alcohol your drinks have. I mean, that's, it's just, you want to know. So that's how you do it. So that's the basic equipment that you need that, that can be had for cheap. That's the biggest entry, the cost entry into making your own wine, ciders, and meads. So we'll be back to wrap things up. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I hope it helped you out a lot. If you like what you see here, please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you'll know every time I come out with a new wine and a new video. Also, I have a Facebook group in the link in the description below. Uh, please join there so we can talk and build community, share uh, recipes, tips, tricks. There's, it's a growing community, and you're going to get uh, into it still early, so it's, it's a good place. We have fun. There's none of that drama talk there. So it's nothing but help helping each other and sharing recipes. Also, there'll be links in the description below. It's an Amazon affiliate links. Even if you don't need to buy any equipment, if whatever you purchase on Amazon anyway, I will get a affiliate credit um, on every sale from my links, even if it's not that product. So it'll help me out to buy equipment and uh, ingredients. So this is Chris with Winemaker TV, and that's all there is today.